Assalamu alaikum. I'm Islam and I'm out, Neuromedicine Chief President. I will discuss with you a short clinically based presentation about stroke, and this is supervised by Dr. Majd Al Qawasma. Let's start by defining a stroke. It is a general term used to describe episodes of focal brain dysfunction due to focal ischemia or hemorrhage. Before we start talking about stroke in details, let's review some cerebral vascular blood supply. As we can see here, the aortic arch branch to right and left brachiocephalic trunk, the right one split into right common carotid artery and right subclavian artery, while the left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery ascend directly from the aortic arch. Then both common carotid artery ascend upward and split into external and internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery give a branch to supply the eye through ophthalmic artery, then continue intracranially to supply the anterior part of the brain by forming two major branches, the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Regarding left and right subclavian artery, they will ascend upward then join to form a basilar artery that supply most of the brain stem and ends up as posterior cerebral artery which supply the posterior and part of the deep brain structure. And to maintain a good blood flow, we need a collateral inside the brain. This collateral or this circulation called circle of wells. It is a circle with two communicating arteries. The anterior one communicates between two anterior cerebral artery and the posterior one communicates between anterior and posterior circulation through a connection between posterior cerebral artery and internal carotid artery. In more simple way, we have main three artery to supply the brain. The anterior cerebral artery, here we see it in the yellow color, mainly supply the medial frontal loop, while the middle cerebral artery in the red color, that supply the remaining frontal, temporal, and parietal loop, along with deep structures. While in the blue color, we can see a posterior cerebral artery that supply brainstem, cerebral lump, and posterior part of the brain. So, what happened if one of these arteries occluded or ruptured? If it's occluded, that led to ischemic stroke. And if it's ruptured, that led to a hemorrhagic stroke. So, these are two major stroke types. Now, starting by clinical case discussion. Starting by history. History, that means what the patient and his family told us. So we have a 65-year-old male presented with acute onset of right side weakness. See, we have so we have an acute that means a sudden focal deficit in this patient. He had the right side of the body weakness. So we can say that he has a stroke because of sudden onset of focal weakness. So he's an elderly, so the stroke risk will increase with age, and he's a male too, so it's more increasing in male gender. From this brief one-line history, we can say that a stroke has a risk factor, and those risk factors are non-modifiable. This mean non-modifiable. This means we cannot change it, like the age. So the stroke increasing with age, gender, men at higher risk of stroke than women, race, stroke more in Hispanic and African, and hereditary and familial factors. Then, our patient went to bed at 11 p.m. and woke up in the morning at 7 a.m. with weakness involving the right side of the face, arm, and to a lesser degree, the leg. From this sentence, we can know that the patient onset is vague as he woke up with deficit. So we don't know exactly at what time the patient developed a stroke. Why this is important? Because we will deal with the stroke the time. The stroke at time is very important. As if the cause of stroke is ischemic, this means a sedation of blood flow that led to brain tissue damage and death, we have to treat and open the occluded artery as fast as possible to prevent the brain tissue damage. And the right-sided body and face weakness means that the stroke will be in the left side of the brain. As most of the brain insult will cause a contralateral body and face symptom as we can see in this image. And his arm more affected than his limb. 
this localized the lesion to affect the left middle cerebral artery branch that supply the left brain hemisphere as presented in the right image here that the arms and face are is mostly supplied by middle cerebral artery while the leg area located in the middle frontal part that's supplied by the anterior cere cerebral artery so his family also noted that he had difficulty producing words and he did not have any change in level of consciousness or any visual problem from the family words we localize the legion more that stroke that affected the speech production area which is located in the left frontal loop that's supplied by the left middle cerebral artery triteris and then the patient is taken to the emergency room and reached there at 8 a.m so again there is no sharp point of time to determine the exact stroke onset so we can say that the patient went to sleep at 11 p.m and right we are at 8 a.m with a total time of nine hours now regarding the past medical history it is significant for one attack of a transient painless of loss of vision in the right eye lasted for 10 minutes six months ago and this is significant that the right eye loss of vision occurred mainly due to occlusion of the right ophthalmic artery that is a branch of the right internal carotid artery and it is like a stroke to the eye and he has an attack also of the left side weakness which, which gradually improved one year ago that's again another stroke affecting the right side of the brain that's supplied by the left The, uh, that's supplied by the right middle cerebral artery territories. So the patient has previous history of stroke that has increased the risk of developing another stroke as we see during his presentation to the, this time in the ER. With history of chronic arterial systolic hypertension, non-insulin dependent diabetes and heavy smoking for the last 40 years and all of these medical problem is a risk factor for stroke too. So here we have a modifiable risk factors. This means if we control those factors, we will decrease the risk of stroke recurrence. Starting by hypertension, which is the major modifiable risk factor, followed by diabetes, coronary artery disease, hyperlipidemia, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, stress, medica stress medication like oral contraceptive pills or hormones, smoking and alcohol. Now, regarding the physical examination, starting by evaluation, evaluation the heart rate. He has a normal pulse, and this will relatively exclude the atrial fibrillation that will cause an irregular pulse and lead to impulse that occluded one of the brain vessels. There is a carotid brewery on auscultation of the right carotid. This is an abnormal sound heard over the carotid artery in the neck using a stethoscope, as we can see in this image. This occur because of atherosclerotic changes of the carotid artery. And neurologically, he has a non-affluent aphasia. That means difficulty in production of words. And again, this gives us a clue that the lesion is in the left frontal area that's supplied by left MCA tertiaries, as this area is responsible for word production, and we call it a Broca's area. He also has wide upper motor neuron facial weakness. So to explain it more, as we can see in this picture, when the patient smiles, there is asymmetry in nasal apical fold and the droop over the right mouth angle. While normal other facial features, this represents right facial weakness explained by the left brain insult, specifically the left middle cerebral artery territories. So we call it upper motor neuron facial weakness and it is caused by upper part of the brain. As we have an upper motor neuron weakness, we have a lower motor neuron weakness. So we have an upper one, so we have another time cause a lower one. But the lower one it be, it will cause the, due to the lesion in the facial nerve or the facial nerve nucleus and lead to a complete hemifacial weakness, not just the mouth droop as in our patient. It's just like the patient in the left picture. And there is a mouth droop, asymmetrical in the fold and loss of forehead wrinkles. The patient also has right leg and arm weakness with more profound weakness over the right arm. This explained by 
this picture again the arm are supplied by the middle tri cerebral artery territories while the leg area located in medial frontal region which is supplied by anterior cerebral artery and finally upon the examination there is increased tone over the right side this means that there is increased tightness of muscle and reduced capacity of the muscle to stretch caused by damage to the motor nerve pathways and brain along with positive plantar response or what we call it a Papinski sign it's also one of the upper motor neuron sign as we can see here in, in this image so to summarize we have a 65 year old male patient with risk factor of stroke present with walk-up deficit affected the right side of the body with non-fluent aphasia and the lesion localized mainly to the left frontal loop that's supplied by the left middle cerebral artery territories so what type of stroke he has as we see here we have main two types of stroke ischemic stroke that defined as the sudden death of brain cells due to lack of, lack of oxygen caused by blockage of blood flow and it's account for 85 percent of all stroke type and hemorrhagic stroke that's defined as bleeding into the brain tissue itself or into the subarachnoid space and it account for 15 percent of stroke so these two type cause a permanent brain damage and our patient might has one any of these while the transient type we call it transient ischemic attack or tia is defined as a temporary focal loss of neurological function caused by ischemia with non-evident of acute infarction and just like we have an clotted vessel then reopened directly so it causes a transient focal deficit so our patient had will not have a transient focal deficit he has a, a focal deficit due to mainly a permanent damage so in the emergency department what to do to differentiate between those two types ischemic or hemorrhagic the answer is a non contrast CT brain, which is a brain image used to differentiate between these two. To explain it more, here we can see a normal CT brain that shows the gray to black, beautiful color of the normal brain. While in the ischemic stroke, we will see a more dark area over the left brain side. While in hemorrhagic stroke, we will see an area with a white we can see a white area that represents a bleeding in the brain over the left side too so our patient has what CT brain it is an ischemic stroke CT brain as resembled as resembled in the left image so the main message from our presentation and case discussion is early recognition of the stroke using this simple monomic that said if the patient has sudden balance problem eye or vision problem facial droops arms or leg weakness or speech problem you have to call and to bring the patient to the emergency as soon and as fast as possible as an ischemic stroke the time is a brain so with the time pass we lose more brain tissue and lead to permanent damage so what if the patient present within three to four and a half hours of his symptom and we found that he has an ischemic stroke this means when his CT brain is still normal. Simply, we can rescue the salvageable tissue that is still not died yet. So if the patient present within three to four and a half hours and excluded the hemorrhagic stroke, we treat him with intravenous thrombolytic. While if the patient present beyond this window or have a large vessel occlusion, we can, we can use an endovascular intervention. And to conclude, the stroke is a top emergency and we have to recognize it and treat it as soon as possible and thank you